My name's Cathy Sims and as Gabriella said that um, I'm the Director of Rural Biz Training and we are offering the agriculture courses for on behalf of Academies Australasia Institute. So we'll get started. Okay, that's not going to work for me so I'm going to have to move away. Okay, so I wanted to start with thinking about Australian agriculture in particular and why I'm passionate about agriculture and I hope that some of you feel the same way as well. And then also about why, if you want to study agriculture, you might choose to come and do it in Australia, why Australia is a good place to be studying agriculture. The things that Australia is known for in agriculture is that we are clean, green and sustainable. There are three big things that we are particularly good at in Australian agriculture. So our food goes to the world, we export all over the world and our food is in high demand because people can feel confident when they're feeding it or feeding it to their families that they are getting clean food. Now that sounds very simple, particularly to those of us in Australia that we're used to just opening up a a packet of lettuce that we buy from the supermarket and eating it. But in other countries, and I've travelled around a fair bit, I'm very much aware that other people are not so confident in what they buy. But in Australia, we know that if it's on the shelves, if it's come from an Australian farm, we can be 100% confident in the cleanliness of that product. We know that um, Australia is a really fragile country. I suppose, you know, it's difficult to see it maybe from Sydney, but it's a very big country, it's a very old country. Our land has been worn over millions of years and our topsoil, what we grow all our food in, is very thin. It's only inches of it. In Asia and in Europe, they have metres of what we have only got very thin. So what we've had to learn to do is to be able to produce our food and preserve that. It's our precious commodity, our soil. And so we've learned how to work with nature and how to build our soil at the same time as we're asking it to produce an enormous amount of food for us. So these are skills that our farmers have had to acquire. Often they don't, I can't tell you why they're doing things, but they know if they don't do it that way, that the soil will not last through their lifetime. So every farmer in Australia, if you ask them what they're about, they're saying it's about leaving our farm in a better condition for the next generation than when I got it. So every farmer in Australia is focused on preserving uh, their environment. So we are very keen, very focused on sustainable farming. One of the other characteristics of Australia that's uh, really quite unique is because we are a very big country and you look at where we stretch from, the uh, latitudes that we stretch through, we go from a tropical climate up in the north to a very quite cold climate down in Tasmania. And I apologise to Tasmania because it's not actually on this <laughs> map of Australia, but I'm, I hope I'm never talking to any Tasmanians of this map. So you can see that up the top we've got agriculture that's very similar to India. But down the bottom we've got areas like San Francisco Bay area of California, central Italy, so Italy gets a mention on our map and uh, everything in between. So we've got areas that are a bit like some parts of South America. So when you study agriculture in Australia, you're getting people in front of you that have had some knowledge or experience of a wide range because all the universities, all our trainers, we have all had to think about as we're going through different types of agriculture within our own country. Okay. The big desert in the middle, it looks, it is, obviously we're not growing crops there because it's just not possible to grow crops, but we do use that sustainably, a lot of that desert for livestock uh, running, where we're running very few livestock over very large areas, and even things like camel production in the middle of Australia. So pretty well all of Australia is used for production of something, but some areas are obviously much more productive than others. 
we, we have about 25 million people in Australia, roughly. We produce and feed 80 million people. So we're a country that is feeding three, more than three times our population. So we are focused on export. So most of what we produce, in fact, ends up being exported. So we're very focused on the whole international market idea. So we have to think about, for instance, what the housewife in Indonesia wants from her meat. The local abattoir in the town that I come from exports every animal that they uh, kill. So everything from that abattoir goes to the export market. People from that abattoir regularly go and sit in the markets of Indonesia, because it's one of the big markets for them, and just watch the meat that people are buying and come back and bring that knowledge back to that abattoir and they have changed the way they cut their meat. They cut their meat in ways that no Australian would dream of <coughs> working with. And uh, it's, it's quite an interesting talking to them. Now that's repeated all around Australia. Various businesses are producing specifically for export markets. So we have, for instance, farms that are doing nothing but producing particular breeds of sheep for the Middle Eastern markets. And so we're actually now, for instance, even in our rice production, we have bred rice, especially for the Japanese market. The Japanese producers have, are horrified with the thought that Australia might be exporting rice to Japan, but our scientists have been working for years on getting a rice that is considered high quality for the Japanese market. And we are slowly breaking into that. It's a highly protected market. But it will come. So I suppose why I'm telling you this is if you're thinking about as an international student, of, I'm interested in agriculture, but why would I do this in Australia when I could do this in many other countries or my own country? What I'm saying is I think Australia has a lot to offer in its breadth of experience in terms of how to produce the fact that we've had to deal with a lot of uh, problems in terms of our environment and our um, climate types in terms of it, and had to become very good at agriculture very quickly. It's something that the world is now looking for us to us for those skills. So our training is about making sure that our students are at the forefront of technology, of making sure that they're at the for forefront of producing sustainably and actually are in touch with those international uh, requirements. So most of the other countries, when I look to it, do some of that and do some of it quite well. But I think Australia has right up there at the top of the list in terms of being able to do it across pretty well all of the uh, areas. So studying agriculture in Australia generally, as a general statement, I think makes a lot of sense um, compared to many other places. So even the postgraduate who are coming to learn those techniques and take them back to their own countries. So I'm just probably working backwards a bit. So why would you actually choose to study agriculture in the first place? This student on the left here is an international student who is studying with us, our one international student studying with us at the moment up at the University of New England in Armidale. Biplop from Nepal. Okay, so he has come from Nepal to Armidale to study agriculture and is not been very long with us, but here he is um, just learning a little bit about handling sheep. Now, our course there is about managing the farm, but what we try and do is give our students just a few little experiences. So he just spent an afternoon when they had sheep in the yards going up and talking to the people there, learning a little bit about sheep and a bit about wool, and learning the words around it, the language, how the Australians were describing those things. I think one of the big reasons to study agriculture is that it is such a broad subject that you can go where your heart takes you from 
your studies in agriculture. People think about agriculture often as farming. And farming is only the first step in that agricultural supply chain. But every step along at that supply chain, from supply, from the farming of the food, through to the transport, processing, value enhancing it, adding value to it, distributing it out, marketing and selling it, and feeding and converting it into fuel or using it for other industrial purposes, all of those steps along the supply chain have a need for people who understand agriculture. So when you think about agriculture, what I'm suggesting to you, if you're thinking about where you might be able to use a qualification in agriculture, remember that farming is only one of many, many options. But having that understanding of how the food or fibre is produced in the first place allows you to be a valuable employee or to run your own business right through that supply chain. So what we're saying up here on the right is agriculture is not just farmers out there in rural areas. Agriculture goes far beyond that. It's that whole supply chain. So you may end up with a job in transport. Through understanding the food that's being transported, you will be much more successful in the design or the management of a transport system. The other point is that agriculture is rapidly innovating, particularly in Australia. If you look at one of the issues we've got in agriculture, and I'll talk more about this later, is that we have very few people. We're saying we produce a food for 80 million people, and we do that with very few people engaged in agriculture in Australia, as in farm production. There are a lot more people engaged in the other parts of the supply chain. The reason why we can do that is that we have always embraced technology. So our farmers are always looking for ways of doing more with less. And so we are very strongly into technology such today now we're moving into drones and remote sensing. So a farmer in western New South Wales out in those very wide open areas is able to be at his computer and know what the stock are doing, why it might be kilometres away, because he's farming maybe 60, 80,000 acres. So he's using computer technology to be able to tell what's going on. Now, if you are an IT firm who is producing the technology for farmers to use, you need to have people in agriculture who understand agriculture working alongside your IT specialists. So robotics is another area that's become very important, particularly in horticulture, where now we see robots <coughs> moving up and down the rows of uh, vegetables. So people are not there, so we're looking more and more at how we can get robots to do a lot of the work that people have done in the past manually. Now that means that when we're designing a robot, we need someone that understands the plants that they're going to be working on. So our agriculturally trained people are moving out into all these sorts of fields as well. Okay, the other thing that a lot of people think about with agriculture is that I'm going to be stuck out there way away from anything and I'm not going to have any sort of a life. You know, I'm stuck way out, we call it the boondocks. Okay, it's not so. In Australia, 46% of the people engaged in agriculture are in the cities. That's really the point I'm making is not many people are out there actually growing the food. It's all these other jobs are taking them. So there is no reason to think that if you do agriculture that you will not be working in a city. The jobs are there for you. You will have a choice of city life or rural life at the end of it. If you do a, many other qualifications, mean that you've got to work in the city because it, other job, those jobs are not in the rural areas. But agriculture is pretty unique in that you can get a job pretty well anywhere you like along that supply chain. 
Okay, so some of the examples, like you might be an agricultural consultant, you might be a commodity trader. That's someone who actually trades in maybe livestock, wheat or crop or whatever, and you might be living in Sydney doing that. You might be a commodity trader further back down the chain a little bit and living out in a rural area. Okay, so not only in terms of city versus country, the fact that agriculture is something that is international, we all have to eat, it's uh, also in demand in, uh, in other countries as well. And from our Australian perspective, we see we have three big agribusiness hubs in Shanghai, California and Amsterdam, are three very big areas for uh, agricultural trade and commerce. So agriculture can take you wherever you want to go. There are, saying, enormous opportunities in agriculture. In Australia, we have six, six job jobs uh, for every single one of the graduates that come out of university with agriculture degrees. Now, I'm going to be talking to you about the Diploma of Agriculture, and that particular diploma is part of a, a larger degree, if you want it to go through to the degree level. Um, and I can tell you that that's true. Every single one of these students that we put through and ended up with the degree had a job before they finished their degree last year. I have enormous problems recruiting people as good agriculture trainers because the whole agriculture industry is screaming out for people to be working in that industry. It's in high demand. Okay, agribusiness graduates from universities, I'm talking about university graduates, so we're comparing like with like. In Australia, generally start on a higher salary than our law graduates and our economics graduates. And people are shocked at that because they're thinking of agriculture as just being a farmer and they've heard farmers on the television saying times are tough, you know, we've got a drought, you know, the government's not paying or whatever's happening, not happening. And farmers around the world talk like that. I've been done a bit of travelling and anywhere I talk to farmers they tell me how tough the times are. And then they wonder why young people don't want to join their industry. Okay, it's only a member of a small part of agriculture and agricultural graduates can command very high salaries. So this is the course that our diploma feed, or feeds into is part of. This is a, a very special type of degree called an integrated degree. What it means is that our diploma and our advanced diploma of agribusiness management form nearly half of that degree. So it's actually part of the degree when a student that does the diploma of agriculture with us, they are doing around about one quarter of the Bachelor of Agricultural <coughs> Production and Management. If they stay and do the advanced diploma, they are nearly halfway through their degree. There is no other way you can do that degree without doing the diploma and the advanced diploma. So this is a degree that the University of New England has designed to use the units that we offer in the diploma and the advanced diploma together with some of their university units, put the two together and made one degree from it. You can see that you can leave at the end of the Diploma of Agriculture. And some students may just come to do the Diploma of Agriculture. Some students may come to do the Diploma and the Advanced <coughs> Diploma. They can leave or you can stay on and end up with the three qualifications. So the, it's the University of New England and Academies Australasia Institute working together to produce this pathway. At, uh, which you can use as much or as little of as you want. The reason why the university did this is because it looked at the type of units that we offer and they can see that they are very practical units. So we, our units are about managing a farm. 
So it's about the management level. Our units are not about learning how to, you know, sow a crop, as in going out there and sowing it. Our units are about planning and understanding what needs to happen and what you need to get people to do to grow that crop. Okay, so it's at that management level. Business management, we talk about climate risk management, uh, we talk about people management, we talk about crop management, livestock management, all those sorts of units are in that uh, diploma. At the advanced diploma level, it takes it a little bit further along. And then the university units tend to be more emphasis on that analytical thinking area. So the two together make a really good combination and a very strong degree. In fact, in our domestic students, we're now finding we've got students switching from other eight degrees over to this one because of the design of the degree. So the University of New England is considered to be one of the best universities in Australia, number one in Australia for agriculture. It's one of the oldest universities in Australia and it has been teaching agriculture all of that time. So it is considered a specialist uni for agriculture. It teaches a lot of other courses as well, but it has a very, very good reputation for agriculture. It's got a five-star rating for student satisfaction and it's held that rating for many years. Academies Australasia are rural biz training, that's us, when we're, we're considered to be in the VET sector, the vocational sector, to be the number one private provider of agricultural training. We have enormous, very, very strong links back to industry. So, for instance, all of our assessors are people who are working in industry. So our assessors themselves are farmers or agribusiness people who are actually engaged full-time in that and are, are assessing for us as their second job. So our standards are very high. Our students get the benefit of both of those. They <coughs> end up then with a very practical uh, style of qualification and if they do the whole pathway, They'll get the Diploma of Agriculture, the Advanced Diploma of Agribusiness Management and the Bachelor of Agricultural Production and uh, Management. So we say it's bringing together the best of both worlds, the university and the vet sector. The range of jobs that you can go to is enormous, I've already mentioned, but here's a list of some specific ideas if you can't think of what I'm uh, being saying when there are so many jobs. But, for instance, banking and finance is a very big user. It's a big employer of a lot of the agricultural trained people. Okay, farm extension, we're finding that um, internationally there's quite a lot of interest in sending their extension officers over to help them get the techniques that we're using on our farms to take back to their own um, countries. So an extension <coughs> officer, for those that maybe haven't come across that term, that's someone usually employed by big companies or the government to actually help farmers lift their productivity. So because our farmers are considered worldwide to be highly productive, they're uh, very interested in coming and learning what ours are doing so they can go home and compete better with us. I don't know if we should be teaching them that. Okay, so a quick look at the University of New England. We teach our Diploma of Agriculture to international students at the University of New England. We have a, um, an office there and our students uh, attend classes on the university campus. So, and we work in a partnership with the University of New England. So UNE, maybe as a university you might not have heard a lot about, but it has over 20,000 students. Most of their students are studying online with them, but they have 4,500 students actually on campus. And of those 4,500, 1,000 of the on-campus students are internationals. So it has a, quite a strong international presence already. And those students come from more than 80 countries. So. 
Now, the University of New England is located in Armadale. Armadale is north and probably almost due north of Sydney and inland. So um, it's in the higher country, if you're aware that Australia has a line of mountains running along the east of Australia, the Great Dividing Range. Armadale was just on the other side of that Great Dividing Range and up north of Sydney. So Sydney is on the coast side, Armadale is just over the other side of the Great Dividing Range. Okay, it would be about one hour, 20 minutes in an aeroplane to get there. And it's closer to Brisbane, in fact, than it is to Sydney. So the advantages of living in a regional city are huge. And I have, cannot understand why people wouldn't choose that as their first place to go. First up of interest to students, it has a lower cost of living. You'll find it much easier to make the money spin out in Armadale than you will in Sydney. It's much easier to find work. There, there is a high demand on people to do pretty well every type of job in Armadale. So instead of having lots of, appli lots of applicants for one job, what we'll find, and um, Gabriella experienced this with Biplov, who has got work on the first place he approached, he had a job. So that's our international student that's there now. So it is certainly easier to find work. If you want work, it's there for you. Um, it's a very international town. It's an old university that has always welcomed international students. So although it's a country-style university, the town is very used to having a large international uh, population living there. I think that you have a much greater freedom. In reality, you certainly have a much greater sense of freedom of being able to go out and feel much safer, much more secure than certainly I do in Sydney, walking around. Um, Armadale is, is, a, is I think, a, quite a safe place to live, and that goes for women and for men. You'll be part of a community because Armadale is so used to having an international population there, they are very welcoming to people from all around the world. The university, being a university city, means that the university is the main employer in Armadale. So Armadale City is very, very conscious of how important the university is to it. Whereas in a place like Sydney, it's harder for the people in Sydney to understand the importance of, say, a university or academies Australasia is to Sydney, because it's so big. But in Armadale, they are very clear on the whole education is really their industry in Armadale. And the thing I, I think a lot of people relate to is that you can feel really close to nature. It's very easy to get on a push bike and ride out and be out in the countryside if you want to. The Armadale itself is a beautiful, beautiful city. And these photos up the top, the one with the third from the left with the trees, that's actually... And so these photos that you see up the top, um, uh, some shots of Armadale. The one third from the left with the trees is um, actually the main entrance to the university. It's a beautiful campus um, in a beautiful spot. Quite apart from Armadale itself, there are some really um, great places to go around Armadale. Coffs Harbour is about two and a half hours away from Armadale and you can see a photo of Coffs Harbour Beach up there on the right. It's got lovely white sands, beautiful holiday spot, place where a lot of Australians love to spend their holidays. Great climate, great for swimming, uh, lots of fishing going on up there. Armadale itself has a lot of very historical buildings it's one of the oldest inland cities in New South Wales and um, I suppose has a pretty English looking character in that uh, some of the buildings look like they've been come from old England. Around Armadale you'll find some really beautiful national parks 
And um, so those of you that are interested in nature, there's lots of beautiful spots to go and really enjoy nature at its best. And of course, we've got daily transport links to both Brisbane and Sydney. So it's easy to get to Sydney or to Brisbane for that weekend if you want to go um, to a show or to some sporting event. So what all this adds up to is that you get to do your study in the most beautiful surroundings. You get to enjoy life a lot more. You're not stressed about finding a job and trying to make the money spin out. You're living where uh, the quality of life will be much better. And studying agriculture means that you're going to get a qualification which is really in demand. Well, thank you very much for listening to us and I hope that uh, we'll get an opportunity to welcome you to Armadale to study agriculture with us. <laughs>